It's William Shakespeare. The brilliant thing about William Shakespeare is that he's the most famous person in the world that no one knows anything about. We catch him at the very beginnings of his discovery of his talent. He's a country lad with a burning passion, locked into a life and family that he didn't plan for at the age of 26. He leaves three kids and his wife to go to big, bad London and try and make it in the punk rock world of Elizabethan theatre. When he comes to London, it's just like ecstasy. London was going through a renaissance of the arts. People were experimenting. It was the center of the world. This whirlwind of cultures from all around the world, new foods, new ideas. It was a world where people died young. People had to live for today. When you have no tomorrows, the now becomes really important. We must live fast, die young, and live a pox-ridden corpse. You're dealing with an age in which religion is a powerful force, in which it's subject to major political conflicts. <laughs> Will, he's a Catholic, living in Protestant reign. Catholic! Catholic! Will becomes embroiled in a fight for life and death and for his very soul. You bring danger to the theatre or my family, I will not rest until your head is on a spike. Alice is a very powerful woman. She doesn't fall into the stereotypical womanly role. Alice is so different to anything Will's ever experienced. She has a passion that is so appealing to him. She, in a way, personifies the theater and everything that Will wants. That's why her and Will come together, because they're very much trailblazers in their own way. I do need you to be by my side when I make our theater great again. Professional theater is a new thing in Shakespeare's youth. This is where the public engage with big ideas and with politics. This form of popular entertainment was completely revolutionary. And the audiences were like punk audiences in that they were very passionate about what they were seeing. If you didn't deliver, they'd riot. The challenge is to use the 16th century and the character of the 16th century to tell a story about our contemporary lives. Along with that comes incredible production design, magnificent costumes, makeup, hair. We had read that they called below the stage hell. So we painted below the stage as hell and fire. And then the ceiling up above was called the heavens. So we painted the heavens on pieces of velvet that are all kind of sagging and drooping up above. The costumes are about the choice of fabrics, the use of embroidery and embellishment that gives it a more contemporary, high fashion, edgy look. The will we see in the show is a revolutionary. He's not a university-educated guy like Shakespeare's greatest rival, Christopher Marlowe. You are a curiosity. Marlowe sees Will as a potential threat, I believe. I think that means that Will is his equal. And Marlowe sees an innocence in Will that he might have lost. When you think about comparisons with artists today, Marlowe as a Quentin Tarantino with his swagger, the braggadocio. To find greatness, you must travel alone. Shakespeare's like Spielberg. He takes the stories from other people and then re-channels them in a way that makes them as powerful as fairy tales. He has wonderful language, but he still speaks the language of ordinary people. We are at war, and our only weapons are words. There is an incredible power in words, in the way that there's an incredible power in Jay-Z's words or John Lennon's words. Ready and action. Whether fine-feathered or the most common of birds, to wing our way to heaven, all we need are words. Will is surprising, passionate, wild, fresh. Exciting. The trouble, the toil, the joy, the love, the heartache. Shakespeare's greatest legacy is teaching us what it is to be human. It dusts Shakespeare off from the closet and sticks a kit drum in front of it and lets it go. I have a play. Who are you? William Shakespeare. Never heard of you. Will, two-episode series premiere, July 10th at 9 on TNT.